What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the Bear and Tide Out podcast. I'm Dustin. And I'm also Dustin. Man. And I'm not I'm not Dustin. I'm Mikey. <laughs> we got Mikey <laughs> today. Mikey, what the hell's up, man? Uh, you know, I'm already have stumbled over some lines. I'm, I'm brand new here. It's the new neck of the woods for me. I'm used to used to how we handle things over at previews. I'm flicks and friends, yeah. but I, I'm I'm working on it. I'm trying. Yeah, oh, yeah. Hey, it's all good, man. Uh, for those who don't know, Mikey is my co-host over on the Flicks and Friends like companion show called Previews, and that's where we preview and talk about the screeners that Screenbox gives us. But that's not what we're doing today. Oh no! No no no! Oh no! Oh no! Mikey, what movie are we talking about today, man? Oh, let me lean slightly out of frame and just uh, grab it really quick. Oh. <laughs> We're talking about a uh, bloody muscle bodybuilder in hell, a.k.a. What, Dustin? You want to hit me with that? A.k.a. what? Oh, well, my wife called it. <laughs> she called it. <laughs> she walked in the room. She went, bloody muscle bodybuilder in heck. In heck. <laughs> Close enough. And another, another one. It's also <laughs> Japanese Evil Dead. It's the Japanese Evil Dead, baby. Um, Mikey's been trying to get me to watch this movie for a very long time, but I am going to put a disclaimer out there right now. Mm -hmm. This is not because Joe Bob had it on his show. You heard no, it the last drive in, totally unaffiliated. <laughs> it was one of those things where I was like, man, what can we talk about, Mikey? And I'm like, I know what we're talking about <laughs> and this movie. So let's uh, go around the room and we'll start with Dustin. Dustin. Okay. Well, what first your, off, did... <laughs> before we get into anything, I, I need Mikey to say the title of this movie five times fast right now. Oh, no. Okay. And, you know, it's funny you say that. It's funny you bring that up, Dustin. <laughs> Other Dustin. He, 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 turns, he turns into the fucking zombie from this movie. <laughs> <laughs> no, every time, every scene. This is an anecdote from my wonderful, you know, marital life. Uh, every time I bring this movie up, my wife makes me say the full title. Because I'll be like, yeah, I'm watching Bloody Muscle with the boys. And she'll be like, what movie? <laughs> and like make me say the full thing. Oh, uh, go, go ahead. Was it? And that is a uh, bloody muscle bodybuilder in hell. 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 Um, oh, you better hope <laughs> you're not so used, I'm so used to it. I'm so used yeah. to it by now. Don't look in the mirror and say that shit, dude. <laughs> if it's summon Shinichi Fukuzawa, I'm gonna go do it right now. He can come That's in, man. <laughs> <laughs> Let him oh, man. be. If he can be a personal trainer. Who's that, babe? I'm watching. The real bloody mussy mussy muscle bodybuilder <laughs> in real life. What movie? <laughs> you want to run that by me again? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so Dustin, do you have a history with this movie, man? I do not. No. <laughs> oh my God, I'm taking it back. I'm so I'm happened. so sorry. We'll come back to you, Mikey. <laughs> <laughs> Mikey, give us a little bit of history that you have with this movie, or if there's a lot oh, of it, whichever one there is. There's not a ton. Um, what it was was I think it was I was going through like Evil Dead ripoffs. I think I had just seen, and that that sounds derogatory. We'll get back to that though. Uh, yeah. I, I had just watched Demon Wind for like the first time a couple years back. Oh my god! Yeah, dude. you know, fucking magician Chuck or the amazing <laughs> Chuck, dude. <laughs> he fucking hacky sacks all over. I love that dude. Oh, it's so good. And I was like, there's got to be more of this shit. You know, I mean, there's all these obvious ones like things, uh, Evil Dead Trap and Title Only. Not not yeah, really yeah. similar thematically, yeah. but fucking, uh, it was on like the bad movie subreddit or something. And I was like, well, that doesn't seem like accurate because the way they're describing it is like, yeah, it's a Japanese movie. It's Evil Dead, but in like a an urban Japanese setting. There's just dude who's like ripped as shit. It's like killing the zombies and dead ice with a uh, barbells. And I'm like, well, what, why is it in the subreddit? That's not bad at all. So I imported a copy from Europe. Uh, Terracotta Films put it out over there. Oh, wow. And I just, yeah, it's great. I just uh, purchased a region for broken Blu-ray player. And I was like, well, I got to break it in, you know? Yeah. Got that. Loved it. Just sat there vibrating, waiting anxiously for it to hit in the U.S. Never did. And then like a year or two ago, I hit Blu-ray from Visual Vengeance. I think we'll talk about Visual Vengeance a little later if uh, you guys allow me to, because I've got a sure. stack we can go through. <laughs> you. Oh, yeah. So I donated uh, donated the copy that I had from them to uh, some other podcasting, YouTubing friends, and they covered it on their show, and I was hoping that'll do it. Now everybody's going to watch it. They got like 12 views. Nobody watched it. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> you're, spre you're spreading the deadites. I I'm trying my best, dude. I sent you a copy. Uh, I gave yeah. them a copy. Uh, I've, I've been showing it to people in my own home for quite a while. It, it just never takes off. And then finally, not that we're affiliated with them, when we have nothing to do with them and, and nothing to do with 
you know, the show itself, but the last drive in did just show it. So it got a bit of a, a wider audience recently, but Some we'll attention. see. We'll see how that pans out. Hopefully people actually start picking it up. That's my history. I think someone might be tapped into Dustin's walls or your <laughs> walls in this case. Um, and that's how they got it on Joe Bob. Like, if oh, I knock the wall down covering. to hang a poster and I see like a cowboy hat or like a bolo tie flop out, I'm going to know. I'm going to know Joe Bob's in there just listening. <laughs> He's just fucking chilling in their walls. <laughs> <laughs> oh man all right dustin are you collected enough to answer I now <laughs> i am so no i have no history of this at all but i i love shot on video style films yeah there's a lot of bad ones out there but there's also a lot of good ones and there's a lot of bad but good ones and this one that kind of landed on bad but good for me and i've watched it twice and thank god for there tubi hell yeah I, I of course it. it's on Tubi. Of course it's on Tubi. Oh, wouldn't it be? Yeah. Uh, so Mikey kind of talked about my history. I opened my door one day and there was a package here from him. <laughs> he goes, hey, I sent you something. It's there now. I'm like, okay. And I opened it up and I'm like, oh, tight. What is this? And he started explaining it to me. I'm like, there's going to be the right time to watch this fucking movie. And boy, did we pick it. So. Dustin, before we get into it, you want to do the Rotten Tomato stuff? Get it out of the way? Might as well, man. Shoot it. All right, Mikey. Dustin, you guys get to guess the tomato meter, which is the critics' review score. Okay. What do you think it is sitting at? No rating. <sighs> Just completely nothing. I don't feel like there's a critics' score I might for have it. to go on with that, because if we've learned anything from me and you... Mm -hmm. Every time we do these, we're always like, oh, it's got to have something, right? It has to. But I feel like with this being so low and Rotten Tomatoes is – how long has Rotten Tomatoes been out? Not even like, what, like 15 years? I don't think they've been around for that long really? compared I, I to IMDb. Play. And if we go on IMDb and the rating is, what, 6.3 with like mm -hmm. 1,200 views, I, if anything, I'll say it's like 5% to nothing. Okay. What do we got? Well, it's sitting at a very high no rating. <laughs> <laughs> there's, right. some, there's some okay. labels, man. If a, if a certain label puts a movie out, you know there's not going to be any information on it on the internet. <laughs> yeah. Would you guys like to guess the, uh, the audience score? Mm. That, that one might possible. actually have something. Yeah, you want to go first, Dustin? I'll say like 15%, still low. Okay. I want to say this might be one of those weird ones where the only people that rate it are like people like me and, you know, Big Dustin who, <laughs> who, who already, I'm going to say 100%. I'm going to go all the way up the scale, 100%. Mikey, Mikey, Mikey. <laughs> they get it? No, it doesn't have a rating either. Wow, uh, it damn. really is underground. <laughs> no underground. ratings across the board, man. That, that, that's is a there crime. any review, like... If you scroll down, is there actually any reviews? Oh, there's there's two critic reviews and less than fifty audience reviews. Am oh, I wow. on there? That, wow. Did I rate it? Did get on uh, there? Old man Brad is one of them. Hey Brad, nice. <laughs> <He's> <laughs> <going>. <laughs> that happened to us, Mikey, like a couple weeks ago. We were talking about a movie, and fucking Brad was the review. <laughs> as soon as you said it was on Tubi, I was kind of hoping it was real. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. All right. So I guess let's uh, we can just start diving in, man. Mm -hmm. Um. So w I must have missed it, but what is the reasoning for them going to this house? So uh, I was hoping somebody would cut me off and I wouldn't have to talk. Damn. <laughs> I was trying to oh, think. I, I was like, I just rewatched it. I but... don't. I don't I'll... remember why they went though. So I think. If I recall, because uh, I was just telling you, Dustin, in private, and I, I don't want to call anybody out, especially not another podcast, but the, <laughs> the Movie Crit boys, um, Adam Green of Hatchet fame and Joe Lynch of a bunch of other cool shit fame, um, they actually do a commentary on the Visual Vengeance Blu-ray, and I thought, I bet there's some good insight. I'm going to watch that and take notes so that I, that way I know what to talk about. <laughs> and I unlearned stuff about the movie. Like, I was actively losing brain cells as they talked. And... Considering that, and that I was only part paying attention, that the first 20 minutes of the commentary is them trying to dub the movie as a bit, I think Shinji's dad passed away and left him that, and he wasn't aware of it until 
their deaths and after they died. Because I remember he was speaking to the the reporter, mm. and oh, she, so she he, asked about the house. So his dad is the one that got murdered at the beginning of the movie. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. His dad, oh, he, okay. that makes, yeah, yeah, that yeah, makes yeah. plenty of sense now. Okay, mm, okay, oh. that's that's my bet. I'll pop it in afterwards <laughs> and check it again, and we'll find out. <laughs> there it is, yeah, but no, man. Once the shit started going, dude, and they end up at the house, and then you have the medium that's with them, right? Like, is that mm. um. Is that uh what's his face? Uh I think his name is Nautil. I think the character's no, name is Nautil. Who it's a uh, Shin What's the director's name, Mikey? Oh, you're gonna you're gonna be in for a surprise. Uh, no, you, 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 might, you, you might yeah, you might think that Shinichi is playing the psychic because he's like the wormy little guy who looks like he'd make you know low budget horror movies. Shinichi uh-huh. is is the bloody muscle bodybuilder. He is Shinji. He's ripped as oh, shit and he's ready to kick it. Body ass. boy. <laughs> Oh, Dave. okay. Well, never mind. Then. Yeah, that's Shinichi. Oh, my God, dude. But once they get into the house and all the fucking hijinks start with this ancient ghost demon that is just starting... It, the medium just starts connecting with it immediately, dude. Mm-hmm. And I loved his transformation. Mm-hmm. And when, like, Mikey was... Brought, he brought it up in, the, in, in a chat. When they stab his eye through the back of his head oh and then they yeah. pull it and they pull it back dude that shit was so good man and i don't know about you guys i'm I'm sure mikey did but uh i had a ton of fucking fun mm-hmm. with how bad this movie is me too oh, and my- hey, okay i'm 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 finally losing battle on this one man uh you guys go ahead but this is one that i i, I respect it so damn much <laughs> i'm not mad that the movie is how the movie is what it is you know i'm not i'm not mad that it's low budget shot on eight millimeter not at all mm, not at all but my wife is sitting there watching it with me she goes this is the weirdest movie i think i've ever seen you watch <laughs> <laughs> that's I'm like, saying something <laughs> yeah, I'm like it. Well, it's, it is Evil Dead. Like there are, it definitely mirrors Evil Dead to an extent, like the flavor yeah. of Evil Dead, you know. Uh, but man, when they dismember this bot, this boy, and the part that had me fucking rolling was when the head ended up on the top of the hand. Oh my fuck god! god yes. Yeah, fuck yeah, that, that around, was. Dude. That was right out of fucking Frankenhooker or like Bride of Reanimator. I loved that. All the body parts fusing together and like coming after them. That was great. Oh, it was so fucking good. It really was. It was so fucking good, man. But Dustin, I need you to tell me what you thought about when they went into the basement. When they found, when they had the t- the apparition in the TV telling them what they needed to do. Yeah, oh. I, was, I was like, first of all, I was like, w- where is this going? I was like, I like this. And then, like, you got to do this, and I got to go chop up the body so i'm like okay so this is definitely evil dead right now you gotta go break up the deadites you know and you do this and then you can leave but then they were told earlier no you're not going anywhere you're fucking you're stuck here so then they go up and start like bashing the dude and ripping him apart and for this being really low budget being filmed on what it was filmed on and how it looks the effects are so fucking good like, oh, yeah. I, I don't know what this looks like on, on Blu-ray with a probably higher definition than what was on Tubi, but... Uh, let me stop you there. It's one of those Blu-rays that starts with a disclaimer about we use the best sources possible, uh, however. Okay, okay. If this is on 4K, <laughs> they're definitely AI, AI upscale that. But um, I thought it was great. I loved all this. Mm-hmm. Um, the dismemberment was really good, and I was laughing a lot with when the head was like moving on different things. Um, there was this one point where um, I think they went to go get an axe. It was either the axe or it was the um, the shotgun. And they go and the he- they put the head somewhere. And then they're like, oh, we're going to go destroy oh, the head. Shovel. Oh, that's what it was. That's what it was. So they go there yeah. and the head is gone. And they're like, oh, it's gone. And it's looking at the dead body. And for some reason, my mind <laughs> thought they were talking about his dick. I was like, the head? <laughs> I was like, it's gone. What do you mean? It's fucking gone. It's a demon dong. Because <laughs> it was like moving, like the legs are moving. I'm like, what? <laughs> so, and I was that, like, oh, less, no, they that's, less, uh, that's less proud of Reanimator and more, um, what's the third Reanimator called? The one that has the, the reanimated dingus that's running around the, the air ducts. What's that oh, one called? Fuck. Fuck. I well, couldn't tell you. The, the third one. 
Yeah, the third reanimator was to say that. Yeah, yeah. Dude, I was telling Mikey, like, the part you're talking about where they're looking at the body on the table, and they're like, what the fuck? And then that torso just, like, pops up behind him and starts running around the fucking room, dude. Like, like so you, you, you nailed it, dude, because with the 8 millimeter, it wouldn't work on anything other than 8 millimeter. I feel. Like, it wouldn't look as good as it does being on better film. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree you know, on that. So, so there's a lot that I really did dig about this movie. Like when that head is like on the hand approaching that lady, and she goes, "What?" <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> can... oh yeah, she was like, this... it, dude? <laughs> so good." Oh, that... She's like the fist of the North Star, like kind of oh, like rapid punching. Dude, yeah, she hits it with the fucking Liu Kang, dude. It's so good. <laughs> yeah, that's great. That's the other thing about this movie. It has like really like good like effect noises and you know it's from that era like yeah this is cheesy but i fucking love it because it's the same yeah. thing like in the video games back then like the loud fucking grass when they're outside the like, crunch 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 i love <laughs> love that shit so good yeah uh mikey i need you to talk about um uh, when he finds the perfect weapon oh okay okay yeah 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 I'm yeah yeah no <laughs> <laughs> I know what you mean. If someone had perhaps, perhaps seen this, you know, even you motioning, you would think the perfect weapon was a shotgun. But I would, I'll, I'll, we'll talk about the shotgun. But I personally feel the world, uh, perfect weapon was the human body itself. Yeah. Because Shin Sh Shinichi fucking just, he, he's a bodybuilder like in real life. Like he is a yeah. genuine, actual bodybuilder. If you follow him on Twitter, we're mutuals. I'm famous, by the way. We're we're mutuals. Oh, there it is. But I will let you. I will let you know that Jeff Speakman is the perfect weapon. Oh, that's true. I've heard about that. Yeah, on the other show, that's also really good, and you should listen to. <laughs> Dude, the one and only Kimpo person that I know of. <laughs> the only one. The only one. But yeah, no, yeah. There's like a whole incredible extended scene when they get equipped. They do the iconic Raimi like suit up scene, the, you know, the, when Ash, like, you know, he gets the shotgun, he like saws it off. He pops it in his back. He gets the, the chainsaw and you do like the close ups, like the tightening of the belt. They do that. Cause it's Japanese evil dead. That's really what it is. Mm -hmm. But when Shinichi and you know, when he puts his spin on it, when Shinji goes into the, the cellar and finds these weapons. Yeah. His dad was uh, big into firearms, which is not super common in Japan. I don't think so. You know, he was a, he was a sportsman. Good for him. So they do have a shotgun down there, but he also mentions early on in the film, it's kind of a Chekhov's barbell kind of situation. They bring up in the first act that uh, he had already started moving some stuff into the house and being a bodybuilder, first thing he brought over was his, his weights. barbell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, his weights. And so it's like you get this cool shot of like, oh yeah, cool. He's like loading the shotgun all badass and it's like camera pan over, other corner, barbell, several plates on the ground. And he starts like putting them all on. It's <laughs> so, so good. Badass. He's he's a big dude. Yeah, he is, but man, what got me during that shit, like you said, he's grabbing the shotguns on the zoom ins, he's cocking the gun. When he hits us with the groovy in <laughs> English. In, in English. English. It's so good. Dude, good <laughs> art just transcends it transcends barriers, man. <laughs> it was perfect, man. It was perfect. But I love it. He walks out there like they have their own Henrietta in this movie. Oh, yep, yep. yep. And, uh, dude, and he walked out there fucking with the dunk <laughs> belt barbell. <laughs> he's, like, whipping it around. He, like, yeah, squishes dude. it. Oh, it's so good, dude. Oh, Can't that's the best shit. kill. <sighs> when he, no, he's... I, I don't know. I, I really like the, the shovel, like, when they, when they kill the, the, the psychic. The, the shovel medium. is technically super impressive. Like, I love the shovel, because, like, the head yeah. is, like, like, that clean cut, and it just, like, stays up there. You know that took a couple takes. Oh, Had yeah. Had to have. I loved when they had him like up against the wall and the head was just talking. And they just like pointed down. And he's like, rrr, rrr. he's like still talking. <laughs> oh, that's so <laughs> good. That, that's the humor coming through because like Evil Dead's a very funny series. So it's yeah. nice that somebody really understood the assignment on that. Like he knows what makes Evil Dead good. Yeah. And the makeup I thought was really good in this too. Um, obviously, a lot of blood. I mean, it wouldn't be a, an Evil Dead knockoff if there wasn't a lot of blood involved. Um, and also, uh, the part where he's like during the final battle, uh, and, uh, the, the reporter like 
busts up his legs and he's like you idiot and starts like slapping her and then <laughs> when he like um after he gets powered up and he has to like drain the shit out of her neck i was like oh okay that's that's pretty yeah. fucking gnarly i was like that's cool but dude no thanks it's like, yeah, it's like a black a, sludge. Ugh. It's like a snake bite kind of thing. You like, it, it, I can't think of too many instances of that in zombie movies where something like sucks the infection out like a snake bite. No, I, I definitely want to do it. No, no, think, not at all. I don't think it ever happened <laughs> because of the <laughs> the outcome. <laughs> yeah, true. I did like how the the girl got turned. You know, he the uh, medium like latched onto her neck, was biting her and shit turned her but i did like how she turned back eventually to help which i thought was pretty neat because he didn't have to go through this situation alone and especially at the end when like they're when they actually do get out yeah <laughs> dude they look ragged ragged dude yeah and it's like you're so used to you're used to ash like leaving with nothing like every time ash goes into a spooky cabin in the woods his ass comes out bruised and like alone yeah. <laughs> but at least at least shinji had something kind of going for him yeah, but the Henrietta in this was pretty fun. Like you said, the kill was really good. But what took me out, and it's the very last scene, is the jump scare they try to get you with in this movie, dude. Yeah. Which, like, who put that green screen there? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh. Oh, dude. Mikey, this movie is a ton of fucking fun. It is. It is. It's, it is gonna be rewatched. I promise. Oh, I'm <laughs> glad. Yes. I think uh, I was on my second viewing. Box. Let me let me look up. I got a number. Hold on. I should have had this ready to go. Uh, you oh, can... How many? How many it... watched? How many times you've watched it? Counting today, we're looking at five. Okay. Dude, yeah. I seriously yeah. thought you were about to hit me with like double or almost triple. Digits, oh no, we're dude. we're gonna have a different movie eventually. I don't know if it'll be on this show, but someday we'll talk about my double digit movie. <laughs> okay. Um, one other thing I want to highlight I'm, about this I'm, is if you guys are fans yeah. of very fast and less than ninety minute movies, this is only like an hour long. It's and like it sixty five minutes. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. very good. And I felt like our conversation was going so fast, but it's like we talked about everything that happens in the movie. And I'm like, that's I forgot <laughs> the movie was almost a little over an hour long. You know, so it's like, short. yeah, it's like, okay, so that makes sense why our conversation moved along as quick as it did. <laughs> yeah, I feel bad for the, the cleanup after because they fucked up that house, man. <laughs> Oh yeah, oh. especially like with like the rice paper like barriers and stuff. That ain't coming out. You got to just pull mm. that down. You got to start yeah. from scratch. Hell no. <laughs> yeah, I would. I would think they just tore it down. It did look it like did. it was probably about to collapse. I was wondering about honest. that. Uh, I didn't. Uh, I did check out the uh, interview with Fukuzawa, uh, which mm -hmm. I did have one question. You guys mentioned the makeup effects. Did you notice the blue face on um, the psychic? Did, yeah. that, did that register with you guys? So in the interview, they asked me about that because I, I never really even thought about it, but he was. Beyond Evil Dead, really heavily inspired by uh, Dawn of the Dead. Yeah, and the Savini, I was thinking about yeah. that, yeah. watching this. Okay. Very blue, and he went for that. He, he thought that really embodied what he wanted to do. So he's pulling from all kinds of sources. We got Reanimator in there. We got Evil Dead. We got Dawn of the Dead. Mostly dead stuff. He likes yeah. dead stuff. Evil Dong. Yeah. Yeah. Evil Dong. Yeah. Dude, that was one thing. Speaking of dongs, like, I don't want to turn the conversation in that direction, but <laughs> I love a movie that's brave enough to have the hero just get slapped in the sack like super hard. At oh least, my like, god, he, dude! He just yeah. takes one, man. He takes one right to the dick, dude. <laughs> it's great. He comes back from it, and then he he even hits uh, the possessed psychic like right in the nuts. He gets him. <laughs> yeah, one one for flinching. Yeah, and, and, and I feel like that's something that only Raimi really does, like that kind of physical comedy. Like mm -hmm. so, the slapstick, sure. Yeah, the slapstick, like the splat stick, even splat stick. There you go. <laughs> So, like, when you think of uh, Evil Dead ripoffs, like, and I don't want to go on a rant and, like, throw you guys off if you have something to Why say. Just, no, just go. <laughs> Dude, I'm the new here, you know? I'm, this is okay. So, like, to me, I could pull off Demon Wind off the shelf. I could go over there and pull off things. Like, uh, Winter, uh, not Winter Beast, uh, Frostbiter is somewhere around here. But, like, so many Evil Dead ripoffs, to me, they take the concept and they run with it. It's like, okay, there's some dudes in the cabin. Fucked up shit happens. Monsters. Okay. Yeah, we get it. But, like, Shinichi was fighting for his life, man, like, to get this movie made. He started in 95. He wanted to shoot on 16. He wanted to be ripped to shit and just, like, tearing these zombies apart. But between school and work and all that stuff, it took him, what, like, 20 years? I think 2014 
if I'm reading right. It's, it it said that he shot it in '95 and it released in 2012. 2012. Wow. Okay, so almost 20 years. And he even mentioned in the interview I watched on the Visual Vengeance Blu-ray that yeah. uh, he was doing reshoots himself. Like, and if you look at the uh, the award-winning commentary on Evil Dead, which is unfortunately a little outdated because they've slowly cleaned that movie up. Uh -huh. uh, Bruce talks a lot about the struggles that they went through and like uh, all the things they had to basically build from scratch to make uh -huh. this movie work. And I feel like of all the Evil Dead knockoffs, I'm gonna say sure. inspired by in this Evil, case, Evil Dead adjacent. Uh, yeah. yeah, Evil Dead adjacent films. I feel like even though they're separated by like twenty something years and like an entire ocean. Shinichi's like the one dude who can say like, yeah, no, I don't know. I know how Raimi felt. I know how Tappert <laughs> felt. <laughs> they, they were sure, going through yeah. it. <laughs> and I think that really, that really shines in this movie. It really makes it feel more genuine in a way than a lot of Evil Dead ripoffs. And I really appreciate that about it. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree, man. I thought this was a blast and it felt really fresh, even though like, yeah, you can obviously tell all the Evil Dead isms that are in here, but I'm like, mm. I really like the spin on it. It's, not really rehashing a lot of what was happening in Evil Dead. It's like its own thing. Fucking crazy, obviously. You got to keep it crazy. Um, oh, yeah. And for it being so short, too, I thought going from point A of this film to the very ending and then walking out of the house, I thought was perfect. I don't think there was anything you could have added. You probably couldn't take anything away, if even if you wanted mm. to, because everything yeah. fits so well. And it's like, okay, this is great. This shot's amazing. The stop motion that's right there, that's fucking badass. The, the blood stop motion is here, like really good. It's insane the amount of work that he put into this. And for it to have taken that long for him to get it out, I mean good on him for you know keeping the passion going and getting this out there for people to watch it like this always goes back to one thing that i always talk about on here is things that inspire other people to make things if you're hearing this and you heard us say that this was started in 1995 and then it didn't come out until like 12 years ago like that should just let you know right off the bat like whatever you're doing it's worth putting out because there's going to be mm -hmm. people like us <laughs> that are checking it out i mean well, and i love people, it dude. i've got the shirt and everything man come on <laughs> i there's love people it. like mikey that makes everyone watch it it's what, <laughs> they, it's what dustin it's, meant <laughs> it's, it's viral it spreads it's like a disease it's like a rash yeah 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 and, and I, was, I was just wondering because like you guys mentioned it was like a so bad it's good kind of thing like i have a hard time with that mindset because i watch so much complete dog shit like uh, on the the audio commentary on the visual vengeance they bring up violent shit and they were like stunned that there's a violent shit sequel <laughs> they don't even know adam green and joe lynch horror icon they didn't bring up that there's actually a violent shit 3 violent shit 4.0 and a violent shit the movie which are <laughs> all sequels beyond that <laughs> so there's an audience for everything man but like when it no, comes sure, to like so yeah. bad it's good stuff how do you guys feel about that? Because, like, that's something that never clicks with me. If I like it, I'm just going to say it's good, even if it's bad. But, like, how do you guys function with that stuff? So there are definitely movies that I have fun with. Okay. And that, and that I don't expect too much out of, you know? But there are also movies when I go, when, the, when they're hyped up, that's when I expect, you know, I'm going to use this as okay. an example. Alien Romulus was hyped up, and I expected this from it, and I got it. Yeah. Uh, Salt on Devil's Island. <laughs> had fucking fun with that movie and I had a blast. I loved it, you know, uh, but this one is one of those that sure. It's not a masterpiece, but we've all said key points of what we've liked about it, especially like the runtime, the effects, the passion, uh, the story, you know, the, the muscles and all that shit, dude. So there's a lot that I did like about it, but it's not, I'm not going to say it's great. Yeah, I will say I had a ton of fun with it. That means yeah, I'm gonna right revisit it. That's the yeah. I feel like that's the more reasonable route because like I'm bad about that because I like drag somebody over and be like, dude, you're gonna love this movie. It's so fucking great. Like I, that just happened with my buddy. I'll I'll pull it off the shelf. Fuck it. I'm I'm, I'm actually shooting over here for once. <laughs> Ignore that. <laughs> <laughs> I just showed a friend uh, Age of Demons, okay. and uh, oh, I brought 
Yeah, I brought yeah. him over. I brought him over like, dude, you're going to love it. It's great. It's phenomenal. And he was like, he yelled at me and it's like, fuck you, Mike. Like, what the fuck, man? What you made me watch? I was like, what do you mean? That's so good. Yeah. So there is that like disconnect. It? Yeah, there's that disconnect with that kind of stuff. So I appreciate just that point of view from you guys because I, I have like a very black and white take on that. So and there's it's nothing wrong with that. Gray I, I, I wish I had yeah. that kind of view to be like, yeah, it's good or it's just shit. There's nothing like really mm-hmm. in the middle. With me, it's like I can see all the different nuances that that are in films, and especially one like this. Like, yeah, it's it's really fun, like really really fun. But you know, there's gonna be people out there that are gonna watch it and they're gonna be like Dustin with some of the movies that that we've seen. He's just like, yeah, fuck, fuck this thing. It's like <laughs> saying, yo, things is so fucking good go watch it and then you're gonna have someone go on and they're gonna be like what the fuck did you just make me watch oh no i've yeah. heard that a lot i've heard that about things a lot and i should probably consider re re uh rethinking how i sell things to people yeah you should just not <laughs> reevaluate just your pitch yeah <laughs> uh, that's true Good point. i'm learning a lot i'm learning a lot but um I don't know. You, you have it physically. I did send you a copy. You didn't know it was on Blu-ray, Dustin. So that was interesting. I'm uh, yeah, honestly, I'm gonna go fucking pick up the Blu-ray if I can. You should like definitely. I'm, I'm gonna available. put it on my shelf because I did have a lot of fun with this. And you know, it's got its flaws like all these other movies, but for being what it is, for the passion that's behind it, I can connect with that. And I I love that that someone had this passion project and they really wanted this to come to light, and it did. Yeah, hell yeah. yeah. Look, I have already recommended it to a friend, and he has already watched it. Sick. And hell Joe yes. Bob hosting it, which, which again, has nothing to do with us. We did not choose nope. Yeah, no. Joe Bob, don't listen. How dare you? Yeah. <laughs> don't come for us, Get out of my fam. walls. Don't come for us. Yeah, yeah hashtag, hashtag yeah. mutant fam. Yeah, don't don't forget the hashtag. We need to, we need the interaction Sorry. on that. Sorry. <laughs> But uh, no, even even him kind of highlighting it, like I really hope it does draw people to it because there's like a whole side of independent film that I feel like a lot of people kind of miss because it is foreign. It, it it's less accessible. Sure. So for yeah. for companies like Visual Vengeance to like get, oh. yeah, you you muted Mikey. No, oh. you back? I can't hear him. Yeah, to, to have uh, something like this become more accessible, when it, you know, when it comes to streaming, it is available on Tubi, it's on Shutter, and I'm still kind of geeking out. I've got a stack over here to talk about, but it is available on physical media, which I, you don't see very often with mm-hmm. for an independent film. So that, that mm-hmm. just feels kind of special to me, like to be able to actually access that, you know, because sure. like, there was a long time, like he, like uh, Dustin mentioned earlier, 2012. That was when Fukuzawa actually started sending out DVDRs burned in his house <laughs> to people to watch. And so it didn't become widely available until like two years ago. So like, I just really appreciate smaller stuff, even if it can be considered so bad it's good or how you guys, you know, choose to see it. There's just such a, such a an interesting aspect to kind of getting a a look at how we view cinema in other parts of the world, especially in yeah. Americanized I'm sorry, a Japaneseified version of an American film like Evil Dead. You know, like there's like a yeah. whole different world out there. But uh, I did pull up if you guys wanted to talk about them. Uh, my Visual Vengeance collection. It's not complete, but it's <laughs> got a got a chunk. I feel like this company what specializes. Yeah, let's they specialize in movies that just sound and look made up. So I just wanted <laughs> you guys to take a peek. Like, would you believe Moon Child is a real film? No, but that cover looks fucking sick. Well, that you know what? You watch the movie and you can find out if it is sick. I'm not going to say one way or the other. Oh, God, oh, no. Mikey. You <laughs> son not, of a bitch. It, it's not great. It's, it's, oh, it's, everybody in the comments, the please let us know right now if you've seen these movies so we don't have to watch them. Let us know if they're good. Have you yeah, seen Moon Child? But this one, this one always uh, gets a, a nice reaction out of people. How about a L.A. Age Jabber? How about what that one? Does that, seem... <laughs> Does that seem real to you? No. Come on. But then you got pedigree stuff like the abomination was like a a staple of like indie horror for like the eighties and nineties. Yeah. I wouldn't know because I was a little weeping fetus. Like I wouldn't have known that, you know. <laughs> but nowadays you can just go out and buy it. And then uh, Blood of the Chupacabra and its sequel, Revenge of the Chupacabra. Definitely, <laughs> I'd probably watch no. that just by name alone. All right, you do that, man. I can tell you not to. 
<laughs> Someone yeah, save me one. in the comments. <laughs> the necrophiles. The yeah, necrophiles. <laughs> I actually and, heard of uh, that one. I've heard of that one. Okay. Okay. I hadn't. This was a blind buy for me. I saw a flying fetus on the box. Like, I got to have that. Come on. It's got a flying <laughs> fetus in it. That one's pretty good. And then I'm going to circle back to the Evil Dead comparisons. I recommend this one to everybody. We've seen Japanese Evil Dead, but have you seen Hawaiian Evil Dead? Slaughter. No. no. You want to watch Hawaiian Evil Dead? Oh, my God. I'll Where come back it? for Hawaiian Evil Dead. <laughs> Slaughter Day. It? You're going to want to look up Slaughter Day. <laughs> Damn, man. But There's no, that's the kind there. of shit, man. Yeah, exactly. And that that that's a label I'm really behind on. You know, they've been putting a ton of stuff out. So it's just, if anything, this movie is an example of how far something can spread. Like if you like uh, Dustin mentioned earlier, if you're working on something, don't get discouraged. Like there might be three schlubby white dudes in front of media, you know, <laughs> like talking about your movie in ten years. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's, it's great. <laughs> Oh man! All right, so I feel like we can uh, round it ratings. off, and I'll start. I'll start oh. with Mikey. Mikey, we do. This is the one bit you are familiar with. Okay. What did you What did you rate this on your five watches on Letterbox? Uh, a four and a half. I didn't give it the five. I sh- maybe I should have. You know, I'm black and white, like I said, when it comes to stuff. Uh, I mean, a lot yeah, of uh, servers about all that. five for you. Yes, can't, can't be black <laughs> and white with a half, Mikey. That's true. That's true. Uh, but no, I, I, 4.5. Uh, I feel like there's, um, if you're being a little more objective about it, there are a few effects. Like uh, we mentioned reshoots as late as 2012. Uh, oh, you can kind of spot those. You know, there's like a couple like effects that uh, feel a little out of place. Like it's like a JPEG kind of like bouncing across the screen that you yeah. can tell he didn't yeah. do in 95. <laughs> it takes away a little bit, but even then, you know. Yeah, was almost regardless. eight years later with new technology. I mean, yeah, he had he had to adjust. Had to, yeah. So, Dustin, what did you rate this on Letterbox, man? And then give your personal rating. Yes. Um. <laughs> so my Letterbox, I gave it a three out of five. Um. Because okay. I thought right. it was really fun. Um. My personal, I'd probably give this a six. Six out of ten. There you go. Not bad. Not bad. There you go. Uh, I gave this a three and a half. Okay, Stars we're all different. Letterbox. Yeah, totally fair. Very, yeah, we usually awesome. we usually mirror on the uh, on previews. Yeah, but uh, like I already said, I've already recommended this movie to someone, and they have already watched it, and they've already reviewed it. Let me pull his up real quick. Oh, I'd love to hear that. Anybody I know? Is it old man? No, Brad? it's not old man Brad. <laughs> <laughs> he'll find if we tell him it's on Tubi, he'll go watch it. Brad's just going to be like our, our new mascot. We should just have like a JPEG of him come up every now and then. <laughs> just like print, out, the print out little masks on sticks to kind of hold them up in front of your face. Uh, so Andrew, is my buddy Andrew down here. He gave it three stars as well. Okay. okay. And he said, he said, what the heck? That was, boy, that was a thing. <laughs> he's not, he's not kind, wrong. He said, it's kind of like Evil Dead. It was still fun, though. Very inexpensively made, I'm sure, but a fun time. Okay, that's yeah. pretty fair, man. Pretty fair. Yeah. Did, you guys, did you guys get a budget? Because I couldn't find it anywhere. Did no, you have, like, an I, I couldn't number? find anything either. No, it, had to, anything. it had to be low, but I, I, do, like I do know US from... Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably the conversion rate. <laughs> probably two paper clips and a wet fart, yeah. <laughs> I do know that uh, apparently he wanted to shoot on 16, according to Joe Bob, but uh, well, they had a so little money. Yeah, they had so little money. Ooh, imagine. Uh, Shinichi comes to, to America. You know what I'm saying? You know what what just benefited off of that was the last shift. And oh, that's got, true. Malum, yeah. And then they got Malum. Same director, same everything. Yeah. That that mm-hmm. If this movie got that opportunity, I think uh, it would knock it out of the fucking park. Oh, well, you know, it's convenient that you baited me into saying something I wanted to say the whole time and couldn't. That's great. Oh, good. I appreciate that. That's how you, you know, you're a professional. You can I tell. You, you, you're reading it. Um, Sometimes. But no, uh, Shin, Shinichi hasn't done a lot of acting. Like, he um, he mentioned in the interview on the Visual Vengeance Blu-ray that uh, he did some some uh, shot on video stuff to himself. I don't... It's on Letterboxd, but I can't find it anywhere. But mm. It would be cool if that was included on the Blu-ray, and it wasn't. But... No. but uh, if you do end up watching this, like if anybody listening checks this out, and they should, and you like Shinichi, because he's a charismatic dude. He really, he's got the Bruce Campbell shit down. Oh, dude, that jawline he's when got he it down, says, man. Movie, dude, that jawline <laughs> is poked out there, dude. If you want so, more of that, he, uh, 
is slowly trying to get back into acting. If you follow him on Twitter, I don't know his at. We can maybe put it in the description. I'll send you guys a link or something. Yeah, it's like, it's sure. the name of the production, like Dodo Gone or something like that. Okay. Uh, he talks a lot about um, work. He's a working dude. You know, like he, he's just an average fellow. And he talks constantly, like, I want to get back into movies. I want to get back into movies. He hasn't made anything new, but he did act recently in uh, Junichi Yamamoto, who, if you're a dipshit like me, you will recognize from the hit film Meatball Machine. Okay. No, <laughs> nobody. <laughs> All right, movie's great. Check it out. <laughs> but no, uh, Junichi uh, made a movie recently called Violator, and um, uh, Fukuzawa does actually play one of the villains in that. One of the one of cool. the characters that kind of comes up. If you want to see that, check out Violator. I didn't grab it, but uh, the box art on that's cool too. You, you'll probably see that through Amazon. Like they'll listen in on this. They'll recommend it to you. You'll, you'll uh, find it. Yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> cool. So, Mikey, we appreciate you jumping on, dude. As always. Absolutely. You know. I uh, absolutely. loved your wisdom, honestly. You oh, going thank into you. Thank you. way more than either of us would have been able to do. I'm like, yeah, the movie's it's great. <laughs> it's fun. Yeah. And that's like, yeah, I like this. That's it. <laughs> yeah. You, you might not go out and buy all the merch, uh, of which, by the way, uh, this does not go to. Um, Shinichi, if you buy this, none of the merch is official. It's very sad. Uh, well, he needs <laughs> but, to get on top hey, of that then. That, that's like he said, he's talked next about movie. it. He's talked yeah. about it. You know, get it, get the money going into Mr. Fukuzawa's pocket, man. Get us a Bloody Muscle Bodybuilder too, even bloodier and even more muscular. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and grayer. Yeah. <laughs> so fucking good. Yeah, but give me some more blue face, please. Yes. Uh, that, definitely. <laughs> There, I feel like there is some in Violator, so maybe check that out. I'll find. I'll see if that's on Tubi. That might be floating around. There you go. So, Mikey, you want to talk a little bit about what you do outside of watching this movie? Mm, not much. I just kind of put it on a loop in the background and kind of hang out. <laughs> no, uh, I do a little bit of art. I'm not super big on it. I've worked on a few things with Dustin, and he's he, you know he's actually wearing one of the shirts. I'm actually right wearing it. Mikey drew Look this. That. Look at that. My jackalope. Oh no, yeah, he's got yeah. Oh wow, both of them. I, yeah. I I thought I had some of the Bigfoots around, but I guess I'm... Yeah, Mikey's also designed one of my tattoos. <laughs> oh, yeah, there you go. Perfect. Bigfoot. There yeah. you go. Uh, skunk Ape. Skunk Ape. I'm the sorry. I don't, I don't, yeah. don't want to offend yeah. any Skunk Ape yeah. listeners. Yeah, take that back. <laughs> we are working on a cryptid series that I've been too browbeaten by work to finish, but we're almost done almost <laughs> with, the last, with the last one. And uh, hopefully we can get a little more of that stuff out. Uh, and I am also the co-host over on Flicks and Friends Previews, which is yeah. fun. That's about it. I just kind of hang out and talk about movies and people invite me to, which is nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Dude. So, Dustin, what we got cooking, man? Dude, I mean, we have a lot of shit in the works right now. Um, oh, yeah. We, both of you and I have been trying to get as much shit done as we can because you're going to be going away soon. So, there's a lot of really good stuff that's going to be coming out really soon. And I put up a poll for anybody who's interested on Patreon of what we are going to be reviewing in October. And let me go get to the poll right now because I Yay. totally forget I'm excited. What, what the questions were. Um, so, one second. Da, 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 da. The poll, I said, what do you want to hear? us review in October and it was either we were talking about this before the entire Halloween franchise which is what I've been wanting to do for a while or another movie slash franchise or you guys can go and comment something else so I have that pull up uh, ends in two weeks um, right before October so if you guys want us to review something specific in that month go on that poll vote to one of those things and comment below if you want something else but yeah, man. Like we've just been working our ass off. I feel the last couple of weeks, just really trying to get this show going. And I say this a lot, and it's I I have to say it constantly to you that um I feel so fresh and renewed um coming back and recording and reviewing movies and just talking shit about everything. Um, it's great, and I love you, man. You you're my new best friend and my new pal um yes. mike did you hear that i heard that i heard that i'm glad i was here he for was, that he was talking about you mikey oh oh hey <laughs> yeah it's just like 
it's been a lot. It's been a big journey. Um, a lot of things in my personal life that's been going on, but I really feel at home now sitting here and on these days and just recording. It doesn't feel like a slog anymore being like, oh, fuck, I got to do this again. It's like, yeah, dude, we're watching movies and they're fucking great or they're really bad. And there's been Heck some yeah. bad ones we've talked about. <laughs> yeah. Um, they're but coming. Yeah. It's been a journey, and I can't thank you enough. And please keep your eye out, everybody, and go support us on Patreon, one dollar a month. You can go take. Actually, you don't even need to be a Patreon. You can go on there for free right now and go vote. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you do that, everybody. that means we could we could flood the votes. You know, um, not me personally. I would never do that. But somebody else could come yeah. on and say, "Hey, you guys got to talk about the Necrophiles, the hit film." <laughs> <laughs> not me. I would never. I would never do that. To you. Who put that in here? <laughs> no, it wouldn't be me. Never. <laughs> <laughs> You'd but like no, it, no. yeah, yeah. I think so. The the sequel, they, man. I don't want to so? go. Off, I think so. I don't want to go off on a rant about it right at closing. But there's a sequel to it called a uh, Kodoku Meatball Machine, not directed by Yamamoto, but but uh, by uh, uh, Tokyo yeah. Gore Police's uh, Yoshihiro Nishimura, and it's oh, even crazier. Yeah, if you like, uh, go- yeah, they, he actually did the effects for Meatball Machine. So wow, go. okay, hell yeah. All right, let's no, check that, that out. Yeah, Dustin did the same thing for me, man. Like. I've said it also here, man. I'm stoked you have that wind in your sail again, dude. Because when you were like, yeah, I don't feel like doing it anymore, dude. That that's hurt me, you know? Broke my heart a little bit because I fucking love the show. And I, I love being a part of it now. So, And Mikey, you too. <laughs> oh, hey, if we're being schmaltzy, if we're being schmaltzy, man, the only reason I'm doing podcast shit is Dustin, dude. Like We've been, we've been buddies now for a little bit. Bring it in. Bring it in. <laughs> bring it in. Don't touch no, your cable, Mikey. No, no, I don't, I don't want to do that again. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but no, if we're, uh, if we're doing that shit, dude, like uh, I was just thinking about that earlier. Thank you for the opportunity, man. Like, and you too, because this is your show as well. More yours than his, technically, I think, based on age. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but uh no i appreciate you guys having me on and uh i appreciate dustin like even getting me into this kind of world and i've met a lot of cool people talked a lot of talked a lot of cool guys and doodled some monsters every once in a while I, a man has something that i drew on his arm and you know when if you ever like get eaten by a shark or something they can identify you with that like, no, I, did. Fucking Mikey knows him. I did that yeah he's so probably watching cool. meatball machine right now call him up <laughs> yeah, open, uh, hit up the meatball machine hotline get him over here <laughs> Hell yeah. So, Dustin, you want to take us out? Um, yeah, before I do that, I actually wanted to mention one other thing. I want to get this hyped up as much as I can. Um, Let's do I it. sent you over some fucking artwork earlier. Oh, that's yeah. That's fucking amazing. And for those of you who know, uh, I work with an artist on this show that my friend Dean introduced me to um, named Jason Miller. You guys can go find him on Instagram, on Twitter, Jason Miller Art. I'll put his links down below. But he's working on some rebranding shit for us, and it's fucking really good, and it's just rough right now. But within the next couple of weeks, you guys are going to start seeing some badass stuff coming through. But, um, yeah, other than that, thank you guys for being here, and thank you, Mikey and Dustin, obviously, every week now. And, Mikey, you're welcome to be on here anytime, anytime, oh boy. dude. Oh, um, please. Dustin, I'll bring Meatball Dustin. Machine next time. I'll bring, no. I'll bring Meatball Machine next. No, no. We're, we're doing the picks next time. you got to suffer from us, okay? Oh, we're we're okay, going to send okay. some shit to you. Hey, no, uh, hold on. This was Dustin's pick. I, did, I had nothing to do with this. Joe Bob had hey, nothing to do with it. Dustin. No, you I had nothing. How, this, how, how this went down is I sent a screenshot to Mikey with four movies on it. I said, which one do you want to jump on? Because Dustin said it was cool. Bloody oh, muscle body builder. Um, I'm not, okay. You got me. You took I it got back the before. receipts. I got the receipts. <laughs> you got me. All right. All right. But definitely, I would love to see what you guys pick because uh, as much as uh, you guys are cool, I don't have a lot of time to listen to shows as much as I like. So this is kind of new to me. I'll have to dig through the through the the library, kind of well, picking views um, and the luck, my guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Plenty. Yes. Cool. Um, but yeah, yeah, thank you guys so much for being here. And um, like I said, a lot of cool shit coming out. Go on our Patreon right now. You don't even have to be a subscriber on Patreon to vote on that uh, poll. Uh, I was thinking about doing it on socials, but I really want to get more people on Patreon and see what we're doing over there. So go sure. vote. Let us know what you guys want to see in October. And um, until then, we'll see you on the next one. Later. Peace. Peace.